I have never had readership the way I do um, working with an incarcerated population. Um, it's it's mind blowing the amount and frequency and it's the material the material that they digest. It's really impressive. Hello, friends, and welcome to season five of the Future Ready Librarian podcast series, Leading from the Library. This is a podcast for all librarians, wherever you are in your journey. It is filled with amazing guests, important topics, and engaging conversations that will inspire, engage, and support all of us as future ready librarians. I am your host, Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher librarian at Van Meter Community School in Van Meter, Iowa, and I serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson. I have the pleasure of working within my library and school community and also with others around the country and world through Future Ready Librarian events, conferences, consulting, writing, and more. I am honored to bring these voices and the work of others to our podcast and to all of you. And today, as we record the last episode of season five. I am so excited to welcome someone who is new to me in conversations in person. We've we've been talking online is Jesse Stores. That's how you say your last name, right? And when Jesse reached out to me, I was so interested in hearing her story and having her on the podcast because she works in a youth detention facility as the librarian and today wants to talk about books breaking barriers. And I just can't wait to talk to you, Jesse, and to hear your story. So let's just start by having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you and your amazing job. Hey there. Um, so my name is uh, Jesse Stores, and I also um, I go by Miss Stories. Uh, I've been going by Miss Stories for about four or five years now, um, pretty much ever since I became a librarian. But it started to really stick, uh, especially with my kids, and um, that kind of helped out um, with me starting to move toward branding. Um, you know, we want to get as much visibility as possible as uh, as librarians. Um, so I, I started working as a teacher librarian five years ago, and then when the pandemic hit, I moved into a new position working in a youth detention facility um, and started as a teacher librarian, really putting in the California Model School Library Program that the, the, the facility was already offering, but they needed a certificated librarian. And so I ended up being that certificated librarian, which was really cool. Um, I'm technically the only librarian for my entire district. Um, I work in a county district um, and I really, I work for court and community schools. So these are schools that kids, uh, a lot of foster youth, a lot of um, kids who are reacclimating back into the environment after being incarcerated. Um, and then our senior extension and continuation programs. Um, so a lot of alternative ed. Um, I've kind of been moving toward teaching alternative ed for a long time. And now I'm finally like really in it. Wow. That's like, you have a really interesting background. And so were you a librarian before you became a librarian here? I was. I was a librarian at a public school here in Sacramento, um, and it was a great experience, and I I loved that job, and I honestly would never have left that job if not for, for this experience because I'd been wanting to work for the county for so long. Um, mm. I, that was hard. It was really hard to leave that library. Um, I was also a librarian in South Korea, um, I was the English librarian for a private school in South Korea when I was teaching there. Um, and that kind of got me started in there. But um, I've always been an English teacher. Um, so being an English and English language teacher kind of got me started with literacy. Very cool. What a great background. And you have so many experiences that I'm sure really help you 
as well when it's not only being a librarian, but just having those connections like with kids. I, I love that. I had great conversations today around a book with our third graders just about, you know, going to India and travels and people that you meet. And so I'm sure, especially with your name, I love Miss Stories. That's so great. I think that's so fun too. So Jesse, when you said and you um, stated that the title of the podcast, I love it, Books Breaking Barriers, Learning to Lead a Library in a Youth Detention Facility. And so what does that mean to you, the Books Breaking Barriers? I can't wait to hear how how you library within your school. So that's an interesting one because there are a lot of programs around that are actually they're, they're books breaking barriers projects and a lot of them are donations and things to help students and especially incarcerated youth get books. Um, but one of the things that I see as a pattern is that they're not getting the appropriate books. And so they're getting a lot of donations, which is wonderful. And they're getting a lot of different types of books, but a lot of them are old. A lot of them are outdated. Mm -hmm. They are not reflective of their culture and their lifestyles. And so when I have students come in, they initially just want to read Diary of a Wimby Kid, which is wonderful. I mean, you should always read Diary of a Wimby Kid, especially if you're coming from a place of trauma. But there's also so much more. And so those barriers that they've put up for themselves of, I just want familiar books. I just want books that I know about. Um, those are going to get broken down because I have other materials for them. And so in my partnerships and in my collaborations, I'm trying to provide for them more materials so that they can not only work on learning about new books and encourage that love of reading, but they're also building literacy secretly. Yeah. Do you have a lot of great readers within your library? We do. I have never had readership the way I do um, working with an incarcerated population. Um, it's, it's mind blowing the amount and frequency and it's the material, the material that they digest. It's really impressive. Um, I have, I have kids who will check out a Stephen King book and will read two giant Stephen King books in a week. Wow. And it, part of it is that, yes, they have a lot of time, but <clears throat> the other part of it is just interest. And then they start knowing what they, what they want to read and bring it back to me in a, well, do you have this? And I'll get lists that I try to fulfill. And when I can't fulfill it, it's always just, it's so like, oh, I wish I could fulfill all of this, but we don't have this book. And, you know, trying to get those books for them, it's always an ongoing challenge, but it's really awesome. Oh, that's great. So how many kids do you serve again? Um, so we have a really, really high in and out rate. Um, at one time, we can have probably about 90 to 110 students in the facility. Um, I work with students who are students and students who are um, still in the system but are uh, adult age. Um, so I have kids approximately, uh, to the youngest I've ever gotten was sixth grade to uh, community college level. So you must have a fairly large collection, huh? I do. I was just actually lamenting that I need more middle grade books um, because we've never had very many middle grade books, but um, we have a humongous collection of books. Um, we actually just got an electronic catalog. Um, so we are now finally using Follett. Uh, we're trying to. Um, we're still, it's still not in active use, um, but I'm cataloging nonstop right now. Oh, that's awesome. So you didn't have a electronic catalog before. So you nope. Oh, wow. What a job. But you'll love you'll love using Destiny because it, it makes it so easy. And so do your kids have access then to technology? Like, is that part of your role too then with your students? Um, so it was kind of weird. So I used I used Destiny at my last school. Um, I love using Follett. 
I love using electronic cataloging, but here we don't have, uh, we don't have very reliable access to Wi-Fi because we're in a facility. And so the students don't really have, they can't log on to a computer. Like normally people can just go log on to a computer and that's that. Um, our systems have to be locked down because we work with incarcerated populations. So we have very limited use to, of technology, which is interesting because I'm the tech, the site technology resource person and the media teacher. So most of my stuff right now is me trying to learn how to be a mediator between the students and the computers so they can actually use a computer, but without their hands. Oh, wow. It's That's very interesting. What a challenge. I know. I, I think about all the technologies. I mean, some things that we use like 3D printing or like our merge cubes and AR and things that maybe don't require them to actually use like a cloud-based um, program, but that is a challenge too. It is. Um, I am currently working on our, our maker space and, and we've, we do have a 3D printer. We do have a Cricut. Um, we have all of these things, but I'm trying to adapt them for a population that doesn't really have a huge amount of access to software um, or computers. So it's been, it, it's a lot of paper designing. There's a lot of, a lot of the making that we do starts on paper and ends with me translating that into uh, the computer. Currently right now, for instance, I'm typing up like a bajillion short stories. Um, and only so that the kids can see them and read them. Yeah. Wow. They're so lucky to have you. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I like being there. It's, it's a lot. It, it can it can be a lot of work and sometimes that work can be frustrating but without the wi-fi without usable technology but trying to find the workarounds is kind of neat that is really neat and then do you also like is your role to supporting the teachers and like collaborating with them um yeah and, yep mm -hmm. doing it all yeah yeah um i try to do as many push-in lessons as i can um, I have, I have a fixed schedule. So I've got, um, I have, I get three housing units come in per day for three days out of the week. And then the, uh, the afternoons I can go and teach lessons if I need to. Um, currently, uh, I offer a, a, the same stuff all teachers librarians offer. So digital citizenship, um, any sort of informational technology, um, curriculum, internet safety, all of the, the, the really familiar stuff that we're all familiar with, I, I tend to offer with, with the kids. Yeah. Wow. That's, I, I know part of the, I think the neat thing about, you know, being a librarian is the work that we do with teachers. And so I'm sure that they also appreciate, you know, your creativity and flexibility in wanting the kids to be using the things that we want our kids to use technologies and be innovative, but being very creative on how you have to think about navigating that with your kids is something that's really interesting. It's definitely fun. I, I tend to, I have my teachers and colleagues who I work with regularly. Sometimes I branch out and can and can work with um, other units because we do work with uh, the county probation and our partnership um, with the county probation who is, is basically their house and we are, we are but teachers in it. Um, working with probation closely, I'm able to kind of figure out how to make my programs a little bit bigger um, and they get more input. So it's, it's neat to be able to get input from educators and staff. Um, well, and do you have connections then with the public libraries too? Absolutely. I love working with my public library friends. Um, my colleagues at the public library are really great because I'm able to issue library cards to the kids. Um, 
and I do have uh, I have one friend over here at the public library. If I if I email her and I'm like, hey, I've got this kid. He's getting released. I need to get him a library card before he gets out. She does it in a heartbeat, and it's really cool because I can put the put the library cards safely in their personals, and upon release, they have their hard copy library cards and a packet of information on how to use things like Libby and Hoopla. Um, and they especially like it because they, they immediately have access to TV. Yeah. That's really great though. Yeah. Because I mean, especially when you develop readers, like you're saying, you have so many kids who are readers, <clears throat> you want them to continue that, you know, when they, when they do leave you and think of the impact that, that you're having within your library on these kids, probably for the rest of their lives. I hope so. And I, I really always want them to have access to more stuff. Like, <clears throat> yeah. If we don't have all the, all the Naruto comics, like I want them to be able to get the rest of the Naruto comics. I don't want them to just be limited to what we have. And because our kids, some of our kids are in there for a rather long amount of time. I often feel like our collection can get stale and I'm like, oh, I just wish I had more, but there could possibly be more. You know, I, yes. I, never enough. Never enough. Uh, is your so? Do the kids come to the library and like hang out and get to like be with you too in the library? Like that's it's. That um, be... There are definitely limitations and restrictions, um, but they I get I get them uh, about four at a time, and then they rotate in. They get about ten minutes uh, each. Each group of four gets about ten minutes before they leave again and I run I run my program so whatever whatever activities we're doing or games that we're playing inside the library at the time oh that's uh, awesome yeah. I want to so, come to your library and see it it sounds like a fun place to be <laughs> I like in there for sure there's music and it's nice to you know have just a different environment so they they can get out of you know their their day spaces and areas that they are doing their time and just have a break. Oh, that's really great. What an inspiration you are like that. I think that, that I love this story and I love that you reached out because we all need to hear these great stories of, of librarians and libraries. Thank you for having me. It's really, really fun to talk. It is. It's so fun. And if people wanted to find you online, where could they find you at? Okay. Um, let me pull that up. Um, so my, you can access me at tinyurl.com slash capital Y D F capital L I B. So tinyurl.com slash YDF lib. Awesome. I know. I know that we'll have people who are, are looking for you. I, I keep thinking in my head too, listening to you that have you ever had any authors like connect with your kids like online? Cause your kids would probably love that. <laughs> I've had, I've, I've, I've had some, I've had authors reach out. I've talked to the authors and then nothing really came of it for whatever reason. And it wasn't anybody's fault. Um, but I really, really would like to have that. Like, I can, see, I can see them loving that. That would be a neat it thing. Super cool. Especially if we could get it in person. I know oh. that that's difficult, um, especially working at a YDF, but they, it would make the kids super inspired. I think. Oh, that would be great. Well, we'll look for those connections for you, Jesse, and just follow your story and, and reach out to if there's ever anything that you need from all of us, because I think the work you're doing is amazing. So thank you for joining me today. And we just appreciate everything that you shared. Thank you. Shannon. Thank you for the resources as well. And uh, thank you for everybody for sharing your resources online. I think we can all agree that it's really helpful to have that community. Yeah. One great thing I think that we got better during COVID was the way that we share. So I love that part. 
the community that we have. I love it. Well, everybody who is listening, you'll be able to find Jesse's information. Also, we'll attach that and also a certificate of professional development that you can download and fill out. As always, thank you to all of our librarians and listeners for joining us for this episode of the Future Ready Librarian podcast series, Leading from the Library. And a very special thank you to our sponsors, Follett. You make a difference in our library school and within our lives and that of our students every day. We appreciate everything that you do. I hope that you can take what you learned in today's podcast and put it to use within your practice as a Future Ready Librarian. Until next time, friends, keep finding ways to lead within and from your library.